Hey there. This is a video that's been a long time in the making. It's um, been in the back of my mind for a while to share and this morning is when the timing felt right. So here goes. Um, I, I talk a lot and I share a lot about practicing awareness and practicing presence because of the way that it has helped me in my life. And uh, one of the ways, I think, uh, very, oh, what's the word? A very powerful example of how it has worked in my life is um, how it helped me through the initial days after one of my children's third suicide attempt. So there's a couple things, there's two parts to this video. One of them is the power of divine intervention and the other is the power of practicing awareness and presence. So um, there have been many, many things throughout my life that have caused me to reconsider choices that I've made, have caused me to set new boundaries and have caused me to choose differently in order to um, initially control what was happening in my life. But as I have learned by um, uh, listening to others who have what I want, um, reading inspired information through through several different avenues, I've learned that I have absolutely no control over what's happening in my outside world. In fact, uh, Michael Singer, who um, has a whole series of books on consciousness, and I know I've shared his information before in his books before, but um, he basically says, you know, this whole world has been created for like, like 13 billion years ago and has been unfolding without me for most of that time. The universe has been happening without me specifically or without you specifically and um like who are we to think that we would have any control or even that the outside world would need our help with uh how it's unfolding right so throughout a lot of different events i've learned that i have no control over the outside world what i do have control over is how i choose to be present with what is happening in my internal world and the thoughts that I have around what is happening and um, if I'm not if those thoughts are not helping me then to shift them into thoughts that are more helpful okay so anyway um, all right with um, with one of my daughters uh, she has been working through depression for a long time and she's um, I just hold her in my heart so dearly um, as I said previously she has had three suicide attempts uh, she's had several hospitalizations and um, with her first suicide attempt I was not aware that it had happened until after she was out of the hospital uh, she shared the information with me and she she didn't live in my home I mean she was a young adult at the time and I had reached out to her during the time that she was in the hospital. It was about a week. And um, hadn't heard back from her, which for probably a lot of you with adult children know that that's not necessarily, you know, they'll get back to you when they want to, right? So, um, so yeah, it absolutely came as a shock to me when she had told me what had happened. At the same time, um, it was... Um, a path that I had not traveled before and had not navigated and didn't know how to navigate and uh, thought that I was taking steps to do what I could to help her and um, within and still still process every, processing everything my, myself too and within a week or two of her getting out of the hospital um, and me learning of this my actually it was 
It was within a week. Yeah. Because I remember it was back in 2022. And we were having a Super Bowl party at our house. And that's when she had called me and told me what had happened uh, that pre previous week. And with that attempt, um, she had lost consciousness. Uh, it was carbon monoxide poisoning. And, um, but had called some, had called the hotline, had called somebody before or in the process of the attempt. And she was rescued um, by the, the rescue team there in the town that she lived in. So, yeah, that was, that was Super Bowl Sunday, 2022. And the very next day I had off work and I always take the day after the Super Bowl party off work. And then that very next day, which was a Tuesday, I woke up with COVID, <laughs> right? So, um, so I was off for a week working from home and, um, So that following, I believe it was that following Tuesday, I believe it was February 21st, uh, we, my husband and I, because my husband had COVID too, um, we hadn't been out of the house for oh, about a week and I had been keeping in touch or trying to keep in touch um, with phone calls and everything with my daughter and uh, so we, about a week later, had decided uh, a week into our COVID and knew that we were, you know, starting to get better. I think we were on like day six. And at that point they were saying, you know, you shouldn't be contagious as much, or, you know, whatever. Anyway, my husband and I had decided to leave the house for the first time and go for a walk. And as we were walking out our front door, I noticed a sheriff walking, f who had been looking in our garage windows, walking um, from our garage back to his squad car that was parked across the street. And I looked at my husband as he was following me out the door. I'm like, what's going on? So he called out to the, the sheriff, you know, uh, can I help you with something? And um, the sheriff said, well, actually, do you know? And he said my daughter's name. And I'm like, yes, that's my child. And they just had a suicide attempt a, a couple of weeks ago, a week or two ago. And they said, and the sheriff shared that um, they had received a call and, um, and it was from my child and that she was attempting again and they had traced her phone somewhere in the Janesville area. So they were um, visiting the addresses that were associated that they had on file associated with with her looking for her. So he had been looking in our garage um, for her in a possible carbon monoxide suicide attempt again. And um, he, you know, asked us who else, where else they may, they maybe should look. And of course we fully disclosed, you know, we don't want to get too close to you. We, we have been, we have COVID, you know, whatever. Anyway, so we gave him as many addresses as we could think of. And then we went back in the house. Of course, we did not go on our walk. And I started calling my family and reaching out to my family. And when I talked with my sister, um, you know, I told her what was going on. And then I talked with, I called other family and my sister sent me a message saying, have you checked the cemetery? You might want to check the cemetery. So I tried calling the officer back and in the back of my head, I'm still thinking, you know, I have COVID. I, I'm still concerned about like spreading this to other people. And it's so strange what, what is, um, what's going through our minds in times like that. So anyway, um, my husband and I, I could not get a hold of the sheriff to say, check the cemetery. So my husband and I got in the car and we drove out to the, our local cemetery and she was there in her car in another attempt. And, um, we were able to get into the car and she was mostly unconscious and call the ambulance and they were able to take her uh, to the hospital and she was, she was okay. Um, she was alive. She survived. And there was a lot of, you know, care that happened from that. However, um, our mental health system, it amazes me that I believe in Minnesota, we have some of the better mental health systems. And at the same time, it is so difficult to navigate. It is so difficult to connect with care because of the high demand for it, 
and the, the low number of uh, providers out there. So after that, I, I totally see that as divine intervention, like a needle in a haystack that my sister just thought of that. And then that's where she was. So after that, um, personally being a, a holistic nurse and a mental health nurse, I thought that I would have the tools to process what had happened. And I learned probably within a month or two that I needed to talk to, to a professional, right? To, um, to get care for me in working through the anxiety and the fears and the intrusive thoughts um, from what had occurred. So um, that had been very helpful as well in helping me practice presence, practice awareness, bringing myself back to um, grounding and centering when I have thoughts coming into my head that um, are not helpful thoughts. And this past December, January, I think it was, is when I discovered Michael Singer's books. And they took that practice to a whole new level for me. And I am so grateful for that. Because in March of uh, this past year, when she had her third attempt, I don't know how I would have managed through it without having that awareness and practicing consciousness through it. So another story of divine intervention, I happened to leave work earlier than I normally would have because there was bad weather coming and I am terrified of driving on winter roads, especially between Otana and Janesville and Faribault and Janesville, which is um, I was actually working in Fairbill that day, so <laughs> Highway 60, I don't like it, 14 and 60, they're not good in the winter. So I had left work early, was working from home, and I happened to call her um, earlier in the afternoon than I would have. Usually I would have called her in the evening, but essentially when I was done working for the day, I just gave her a call right away. And there was something strange, I couldn't pinpoint what it was but she was in the middle of something so I told her okay give me a call back when you're done and she she eventually did call back and I could tell that something was off and when I asked more questions about it she shared with me that she had overdosed on several antidepressants um, different kinds many doses like uh, more than 20 doses of different multiple types of antidepressants that she had and that she had drank um Quite a bit of alcohol uh, like I don't know is that I don't 90 proof alcohol or something like that and then um, was about to take uh, the rest of her blood pressure medication that she had so through throughout practicing awareness and groundedness and centeredness and just focused consciousness um, in my day-to-day -day life I was able to just say, you know what, I'm going to give you a call back. And I was able to call the police in the town that she lived in and let them know what was happening. And by the time I called her back, uh, within 30 seconds, they were knocking on her door and intervening. Um, I, I spoke with the police officer after they had gotten her into the ambulance. And they told me what hospital she was going to, so I gave them a call. Now, mind you, this is, um, she lived about 40 miles away from me, and the hospital they were taking her to was much further away from me, but closer, closest hospital to her. So, through the angst, anguish of not being able to be there for her because I did not feel safe to drive on the roads in the weather. I was able to practice allowing those feelings to practice being present with those feelings and allowing them to move through me rather than 
pushing them away and distracting myself um, from them. I had called the emergency department where they were taking her. I tried to give them a history, um, not just of her mental health care previously, but of you know, what she had told me on the phone and what she had taken and everything so that they had that information and had asked them to update me, um, provided that she was able to consent for that because she has always consented in the past for that information to be shared with me. And um, when I did not hear back from them at about 9.30 at night, I gave them a call for an update, thinking that they were going to tell me she was... Um, settled in waiting to be placed in a mental health unit. Instead, they told me that um, she had been intubated and the helicopter was en route to take her to Mercy One in Mason City to be admitted to a critical care unit. Um, that was not what I was expecting to hear. It was obviously very upsetting. And yet at the same time, because I had practiced awareness and presence and consciousness and allowing what I was feeling to be present and move through me, I was able to consciously be present with what I was feeling in that moment. And um, absolutely, I was very upset. I was heartbroken, <laughs> wailing. I guess you could say, um, at one point, because of the emotional pain, and at the same time recognizing how beautiful the heart presence is, that the heart can love somebody so much, that my heart can love somebody so much my children, of course, that it hurts this bad when I'm feeling that separation from them, when I'm feeling that um, pain for them. The next day, of course, then I called Mason City. I talked with them. I got all the information that I needed in order to be able to be there right away the next morning. And, and I... Um, my other daughter and, and my other son had, um, one of my sons had been down there. My husband and I have, for those who don't know, my husband and I have five kids. Um, three are mine and two are his from a blended, we, we blended our families. So, um, my, uh, my daughter and son were able to come and be there. Uh, my daughter actually stayed the weekend with me in Mason City, which I think was super helpful for me to work through it. Um, and as I was there in the hospital with my intubated daughter uh, for those several days, I intentionally sat with her, held her hand, was present with her. There was a point where I, um, I caught myself. It was like, I think it was the second day of sitting there with her. I caught myself reaching for my phone to scroll through social media uh, subconsciously as a distraction. And when I realized what I was doing, I put my phone away and I brought myself back to being present with her and being present with what was happening and what I was feeling inside of me and allowing it to move through me. I was there in Mason City for, I think, four days, three or four days. And then I came home uh, for a night and then went back down. And um, what I realized that the night that I had come home, I was expecting to feel exhausted. And I was surprised when I didn't. And as I reflected on that, I believe 100% that the reason I wasn't feeling exhausted from the situation is because that I had processed it all by being present in the moment and letting it flow through me and not suppressing it, not holding it back, um, not pushing it away and just allowing it. And that was a huge, huge 
aha moment for me. Like, oh my goodness. I, I knew being practicing awareness and consciousness was helpful and I found it helpful, but holy buckets. To be able to be home and be present with my husband then, um, in that time and not feel heavy and weighted down by the entirety of the situation was just a huge eye-opener for me. And that is why I share the message of awareness and practicing awareness, practicing presence, practicing consciousness, allowing your emotions to flow through you, feeling them in the moment, not holding on to them if it's a good feeling, um, because we like to hold on to those good feelings, but they're not meant to stay in us. They're meant to flow through us and not pushing it away or resisting it if it's an uncomfortable feeling because they're meant to flow through us too. And instead, when you are having those uncomfortable feelings, asking yourself, why is this feeling uncomfortable? What is this telling me? How can I, sh what are my thoughts around it? And if my thoughts around it are not helpful, how can I shift them? Um, yeah. So, um, that is, that is my story at this point in time. My daughter is doing okay. We absolutely would love to have prayers and well wishes because they always help. They always help. They always help. And um, anybody who uh, anybody who lives with mental illness or um, knows and loves somebody with mental illness, depression, anxiety, um, I would encourage you to practice awareness, practice consciousness. Um, my heart goes out to you and um, I'm always happy to answer any questions about um, navigating the mental health system and I also want to put a plug out there uh, that 988 is the new suicide hotline, national suicide hotline so share that with people you know and love, 988 um, thank you all so much for, for listening this long and, um, and I hope that uh, you be well Bye.